Hello, how's it doing? Welcome and welcome back to our daily Bible reading. Today, we are reading the readings. We are reading the Bible chapters for day 43 from Joshua chapter 24 to Judges chapter 4. Five chapters per day. Joshua ends at chapter 24. And then we continue in Judges to chapter 4. Let's begin. Chapter 24, Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel, for their heads, for their judges, and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river in old times, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river, led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his descendants, and gave him Isaac. So Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I gave the mountains of Seir to possess. But Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Also I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt. As According to all, according to what I did among them, afterward, afterward, I brought you out. Then I brought you. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea. And the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. So they cried out to the Lord, and He put darkness between you and the Egyptians, brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes saw what I did in Egypt, and will, and your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. Then you dwelt in the wilderness a long time, and I brought you into the land of the Amorites, who dwelt on the other side of the Jordan, and they fought with you, but I gave them into your hand, that you might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose to make war against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Bor, to curse him. But I would not listen to Balaam, therefore he continued to bless you, so I delivered you out of his hand. Then you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you. Also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, and Ethites, the, Ga the Gigashites, and Avites, and the Jebusites. But I delivered them into your hand. I sent the Hornets before you, which drove them out from before you. Also the two kings of the Amorites, but not with your sword or with your bow. I have given you a land. I have given you a land which you did not build, and you dwell in them. And I have given you a land which you did not labor, and cities which you did not build, and you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. Now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in, and in Egypt. Serve the Lord, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which your fathers served that were on, we on the other side of the river, all the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way that we went, and among, the, among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, including the Amorites, who dwelt in the land. We will also serve we will we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God, he is a jealous God. You will not forgive your transgressions, nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, but we will serve the Lord. So Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore he said, Put away the foreign gods which are among you, and incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve. And his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made for them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. Then Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone and set it up under the ark that was by the that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness 
for us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord which he spoke to us. It shall therefore be witness to you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, each to his own inheritance. Now it came to pass after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being one hundred and ten years old, and they buried him within the border of his inheritance at Simna Sarah, which is in the mountains of Abraham, and on the north side of Mount Gash. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had known all the works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. The bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel had brought up out of Egypt, they buried at Shechem, in the plot of ground which Jacob had bought from the sons of Amor, the father of Shechem, for one hundred piece, for one for one hundred pieces of silver, and which had become an inheritance of the children of Joseph. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, died. They buried him in a hill belonging to Phineas, his son, which was given to him in the mountains of Abraham. Judges, now, Judges chapter 1. Judges chapter 1. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, We shall be first to go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them. And the Lord said, Ju Judah shall go up. Indeed, I have delivered the land into his hand. So, Joshua, so Judah said to Simeon his brother, Come up with me to my allotted ter territory, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I, will, and I will likewise go with you to your allotted territory. And Simeon went with him. Then, then Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into, his, into their hand. And they killed 10,000 men at Bezek, and they found Adon in Bezek in Bezek. And fought against him, and they defeated the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Then Adon Bezek fled, and they pursued him, and caught him, and cut off his thumb and big toes. And Adon Bezek said, Seventy kings with their thumbs and big toes, cut off, cut off, used to gather scraps under my table, as I have done. So God has repaid me. Then they brought, then they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Now the children of Judah fought against Jerusalem and took it. They struck it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. And afterward, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites who dwelt in the mountains, in the south, and in the lowland. Then Judah went against the Canaanites who dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron was formerly Kijat Abba. And they killed Sheshai, Ayman, and Talmai. For from there, they went against the inhabitants of Debi. The name of Debi was formerly Kijat Sefa. Then Caleb said, Whoever attacks Kijat Seva and takes it, to him I will give my daughter Aksha, Aksha as wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it. So he gave him his daughter Aksha as wife. Now it happened when she came to him that she urged him to ask her father for a field. And she dismounted from her donkey. And Caleb said to her, What do you wish? So she said to him, Give me a blessing, since you have given me land in the south. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. Now the children of the Canaanites, Moses' father-in-law, went up from the city of Palms with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lies in the south, which lies in the south near Arad. And they went and dwelt among the people. And Judah went with his brother Simeon, and they attacked the Canaanites who, had, who inhabited Zebat. And utterly destroyed it. So the name of the city was called Horma. And Judah took Gaza with its territory, Ashkelon with its territory, and Akron with its territory. So the Lord was with Judah, and they drove out the mountaineers, but they could not drive out the inhabitants of the lowland, because they had chariots of iron. And they gave Hebron to Caleb, as Moses had said. Then he expelled from there the three sons of Anak. But the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites who inhabited Jerusalem. So the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. And the house of Joseph also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. So the house of Joseph sent men to spy out Bethel. The name of the city was formerly Luz. And when the, and when the spies saw a man coming out of the city, they said to him, Please show us the entrance to the city, and we will show you mercy. So he showed them the entrance of the city. And they struck the city with the edge of the sword, but they let the man and all his family go. And the, man, and the man went to the land of the Hittites, built a city, and called its name Luz, which is, which is its name to this day. However, Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth, Shen, 
and its villages and Tanakh and its villages, all the inhabitants of Dor and its villages, and its villages, all the inhabitants of Iblem and its villages, all the inhabitants of Megiddo and its villages. For the Canaanites were determined to dwell in that land, and it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites under tribute, but did not completely drive them out. Nor did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in Gezer. So the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Nor did Zebulon drive out the inhabitants of Kitron or the inhabitants of Nahalon. So the Canaanites dwelt among them and were put under tribute. Nor did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Akko or the inhabitants of Sidon or of, Ad or of Alab, Akshib, Elba, Avik or Reob. So the Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out, nor did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, or the inhabitants of Beth Anat, but they dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and Beth Anat were put under tribute to them, and the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountains, for they would not allow them to come down to the valley. And the Amorites were determined to dwell in Mount Eris, in Ajalon, and in Shalbim. Yet, when the strength of the house of Joseph became stronger, they were put under tribute. Now the boundary of the Amorites was from the ascent of Akrabim, from Selah and upward. Then the angel of the Lord, chapter 2 now, then the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bokim and said, I led you up from Egypt and brought you to the land of which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down the, their altars. But you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore I also said, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall be thorns in your sight, and their gods and their gods shall be a snare to you. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke this words to all the children of Israel that people lifted up their voices and wept. And when they called the name of that place, then they called the name of that place Bochim, and they sacrificed there to the Lord. And when Joshua had dismissed the people, the children of Israel went each to went each to his own inheritance to possess the land. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the in, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died when he was one hundred and ten years old, and they buried him within the borders within the border of his of his inheritance at Timnath Eris, in the mountains of Abraham, on the north side of Mount Gash. When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the bowels, and they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt, and they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them, and they bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Ashtor and the Ashtoreths. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. So he delivered them into the hands of plunderers who, who despoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity, as the Lord had said. And the Lord had sworn to them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the hand of, the, of those who plundered them. Yet they would not listen to their judges, but they played the allot with other gods and bowed down to them. They turned quickly from the way in which their fathers walked. In obeying the commandments of the Lord, they did not do so. And when the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the, of the judge. For the Lord was moved to pity by their groaning because of those who oppressed them and harassed them. And it came to pass, when the judge was dead, that they reverted and behaved more corruptly than their fathers, by following other gods to serve them and bow down to them. They did not cease from their own doings, nor from their stubborn way. Then the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he said, Because this nation has transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and has not heeded my voice, I, I also will no longer drive out from before. I also will not will no longer drive out before them any of the nations which Joshua left, which Joshua left when he died, so that through them I may test Israel, whether they will keep the ways of the Lord to walk in them as as their fathers kept them or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out immediately, nor did he deliver them into the hand, nor did he deliver them into the hand of Joshua. 
chapter 3. Now these are the nations which the Lord left, that he might test Israel by them. That, that is, all who had not known any of the wars in Canaan. This was only so that this was only so that the generations of the children of Israel might be taught to know war, at least those who had not formerly known it. Namely, five lords of the Philistine, all the Canaanites, the, the Sidonians, and the Avites who dwelt in the Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal, from Mount Baal Armon to the entrance of Amat, and they were left that he might test Israel by them to know whether they would obey the commandments of the Lord, which he had commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. Thus the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hervites, and the Jebusites, and they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their daughters to their sons, and they served their gods. So the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They, fought, they forgot the Lord their God, and served the Baals and Asherahs. Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against them, and he sold them into the hand of Cush, of Cushan Rishatim, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Cushan Rishatim eight years. When the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the children of Israel, who delivered them. Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he judged Israel. He went out to war, and the Lord delivered Cushan Rishatim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. And his and prevailed over Cushan Risha time. So the land had rest for forty years. Then Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord strengthened Eglon, king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord of the Lord. Then he gathered to himself the people of Ammon and Amalek, went and defeated Israel, and took possession of the city of Palms. So the children of Israel served Eglon, king of Moab, eighteen years. But when the children of Israel cried, to, cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for them, Eod, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite, the Benjamite, a left-handed man. But by him the children of Israel sent tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Eod made himself a dagger. It was double-edged and a kibit in length, and fastened it and fastened it under his clothes on his right thigh. So he brought the tribute to. Eglon, king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man, and when he had finished presenting the tribute, he sent away the people who had carried the tribute. But he himself turned back from the stone images that were at Gilgal and said, "I have a secret message for you, O king." He said, "Keep silence." And all who attended, and all who attended him went out from him. So Eglon came to him. Now he was sitting upstairs in his cool private jam in his cool private chamber. Then Eod said. I have a message from God to you. So he arose from his seat. Then he had reached with his left hand, took the dagger from his right thigh, and thrust it into his belly. Even the youth went in after the blade, and the fat and the fat closed over the blade, for he did not draw the dagger out of his belly, and his entrails came out. Then he had went out through the porch and shut the doors of the upper room behind him and locked them. Then, when he had gone out, Eglon's servants came to look, and to their surprise, the doors of the upper room were locked. So they said, he is probably, he is probably attending to his needs in the cool chamber. So they waited till they were embarrassed, and still he had not opened the doors <laughs> of the upper room. Therefore, they took the key and opened them, and there was their master falling dead on the floor. But he had escaped while they delayed, and passed beyond the stone images, and escaped to Sarah. And it happened when he arrived that he blew the trumpets in the mountains of Abraham, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mountains, and he led them. Then he said to them, Follow me, for the Lord has delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. So they went down after him, seized the forts of the Jordan, leading to Moab, and did not allow anyone to cross over. And that time, and at that time, they killed about ten thousand men of Moab, all stout men of valor. Not a man escaped. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest and a land had rest for eighty years. After him was Shamgar, the, the son of Anas, who killed six hundred men of the Philistine with an ox god, with an ox god, and he and he also delivered Israel. Chapter four.
When Eliot was dead, the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Azor. The commander of his army was Caesar, who dwelt, who dwelt in Arosh, who dwelt in Arashet Agoim. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, for Jabin had nine hundred chariots of iron, and for twenty years he had he had actually oppressed the children of Israel. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidot, was judging Israel at that time, and she would sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Rama, between Rama and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam, from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, As not the, as not the Lord God of Israel commanded, Go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor. Take with you ten thousand men of the sons of Naphtali and of the, and of the sons of Zebulun. And against you, I will deploy Caesarea, the commander of Jabez's army, with his chariots and his multitude at the river Kishon. And I will deliver him into your hand. And Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey. In the journey you are taking, for the Lord will sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. <laughs> then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. When Barak called Zebulon and Naphtali to Kadesh, he went up with ten thousand men under his command, and Deborah went up with him. Now Eber, Eber the Kenite of the children of Obab, the father in law of Moses, had separated himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent near the terebinth tree at Zanai, which is beside Kadesh. And they Reported, and they reported to Caesarea that Barak, the son of Abinam, had gone up to Mount Tabor. So Caesarea gathered together all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron, and all the people who were with him from Arosheth, from Arosheth Agonim to the river Kishon. Then Deborah said to Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord has delivered Caesarea into your hand. Has not the Lord gone out? Before you, so Barak went down from Mount Tabor with ten thousand men following him, and the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and all his army with the edge of the sword before Barak. And Sisera alighted from his chariots and fled away on foot. But Barak pursued the chariots and the army as far as Arosheth Ag Agoim, and all the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not a man was left. However, Sisera had fled away on foot. To the tent of Jael, the wife of Eber the Kenite, for there was peace between Jabin, for between Jabin, king of Azor, and the house of Eber the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Caesarea and said to him, "Turn aside, my lord. Turn aside to me. Do not fear." And when she had turned, and when he had turned aside with her into the tent, she covered him with a blanket. Then he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened a jug of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him. And he said to her, Stand at the door of the tent, and if any man comes and inquires of you, and says, Is there any man here? You shall say no. Then Jared, Eber's wife, took a tent peg, and took a hammer in her hand, and went softly to him, and drove the peg into his temple. And it went down into the ground, for he was fast asleep. And weary, so he died. And then, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said to him, Come, I will show you the man whom you seek. And when he went into a tent, there lay Sisera died with the peg in his temple. So on that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, in the presence of the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel grew stronger and stronger against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. The end of today's reading. Not the end of today's reading. The end of the 43's reading. Okay. Right after this, I will record another video for day 44. And that will be Judges chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, and chapter 9. Judges chapter 5. To chapter 9. Stay tuned and I'll see you in that video. Bye.